When a patient comes in with suspected diabetic neuropathy, you can perform a monofilament test. For the monofilament test, you're going to be assessing 10 different locations within the diabetic individual's foot. Locations are going to be here, 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 and then one on uh, three toes, and then also one on the dorsum of his foot. So let's assess the plantar side of his foot first. I'm going to be placing the monofilament against the patient's foot just enough so it bends the monofilament. I don't want to apply too much pressure. One note is that the patient is laying down and they cannot see you uh, place the monofilament on their foot. Next, you also want to make sure that you're not at a constant rate because if the patient knows that you're at a constant rate, they can indicate that they feel it even when you're not even pushing. So you want to vary up your sights and you want to vary up your speed. So I'm going to assess the bottom of his foot, the plantar surface of his foot. So just indicate when you feel something. So that was all nine spots on the bottom. So here, here, here. Next, my last location that I'm going to test for is going to be on the dorsum of his foot. Here, I like to do it between his large toe and his second toe, uh, just a little bit up on the dorsum. And again, tell me if you feel something. A failed diabetic monofilament test is going to be when the patient has multiple sites. And when I mean multiple, I mean three, four, five plus failed sites. Um, if the patient does have one or two failed sites, that could be normal. And that's because if a patient has calluses or corns or warts, um, it could interfere with the sensation. And we all know that a callus can be um, typical. So one or two failed sites doesn't really tell you much. Um, but when you start failing three, four, five locations, it can clue you into diabetic neuropathy.